In this video, we're going to explore the live connection between Photoshop and 3D Coat. Now, as you may notice, the user interface in 3D Coat, at least in the paint room, is very familiar to a Photoshop user, and that's by design. Uh, that includes the layers panel, the icons at the bottom, the right click menus, um, the different blending modes, and so on. You even have this texture editor, which is very much like having Photoshop open within the application or within the viewport and as you paint in the 2D texture editor you'll see live updates on the model or vice versa. If I'm painting on the model as soon as I let off the cursor I'll see the update here in the editor but if I'm painting in the editor while I'm actually painting I can see the updates here. So we've got a video that covers that but the point is this is intended to be very much like Photoshop, so it's very comfortable and familiar to you uh, if you're coming from a Photoshop background, okay? M including a number of hotkeys as well, such as the, the brush, uh, is B hotkey, the uh, color picker is I, just like it is in Photoshop, and so on. And you can always assign hotkeys, uh, if you like, to these others uh, to match their counterparts in Photoshop as well. But in general, there is an attempt to uh, offer a good level of standardization between the two applications. So for example, if you are painting a free selection somewhere in the application, not just in the paint room, you can hit the keyboard combination control D to deselect just as you would in Photoshop. Also inverting the selection, control shift I will invert the selection just as it would in Photoshop as well. Again, that's to uh, help increase the comfort level of a artist with a Photoshop background. So let's go ahead and get straight into this uh, live connection here. Let's say I want to do some texture painting on this groin cloth color layer. I can go to the edit menu, sync layers with external editor. Okay, and it gives me the option to choose which UV map I want to work with. And I hit OK. And you'll notice that if I don't have Photoshop open, it'll open it for me and bring it to the forefront and have me all set up with the textures. And one other key benefit is it will bring the wireframe along with the layer you had selected. So you can use the wireframe as a guide if you need. Okay. So let's do a quick test here. I'll create a new layer and choose the text tool. And one of the reasons you may want to go back and forth is, as you may know, uh, Photoshop has an extensive array of text formatting options here. So let's say I type something here. that into place. Go back to my layer panel. And what I want to point out is 3D Coat will read this text layer just like it is. I don't have to rasterize it first. Now, the thing to keep in mind is if I apply some strokes or you know some type of um, layer style to a given layer, I need to rasterize that. Okay, so if I were to apply a stroke, maybe make that if I Save now, what's going to happen is 3D Coat's only going to read this text layer. It's not going to understand these effects. Okay, what I need to do in that case is right click, rasterize layer style. OK, 
Okay. I'm going to go back to my history here. And I'll just leave this be, but you get the idea. You have to rasterize a layer style or an effect, something like that. If I want to do some work here and apply a layer mask, paint a portion of it out, I need to right click and choose apply layer mask because 3D Coat will not recognize this mask in its current state. And so what will happen is when I choose Apply Layer Mask, you'll notice that mask thumbnail is gone. It deleted all the pixels that were masked. Okay. So same thing applies if you create a layer mask in 3D Coat. This works both ways. You need to apply the layer mask ahead of time. Now one good thing you'll find is, let's say I change the blending mode to something like Color Dodge. 3D Coat, it, as long as it has these blending modes, which it actually does, it has almost all of them, but if you have a correlating blending mode in Photoshop and 3D Coat, then it will carry over. So let's go ahead and save now. And you'll notice both the text layer and this other layer with that mask applied came across just fine. Right. Okay, so if I want to modify multiple layers, I need to choose from the edit menu this second option here, edit all layers in external editor. Again, I can choose the UV map I want to work with. It's going to ask, do I want to update it? Yes. And you can see all these other layers that are now here in Photoshop. You can file, save. Okay. And you can see how that works. All right. So now the last thing I want to point out is projection mapping. Okay. This third option, I should say this fourth option here, edit projections in external editor. If I want to maybe map some text in this area across the model, I can do that in 3D Coat. Let's um, edit, edit projections in external editor. And what I'm going to do is first check this external editor projection scale. Why is this important? Well, it's important because at you know it's standard 100%. If I don't scale at all, the camera is just going to take basically a snapshot of what's here in the viewport. And unless I have it scale it up, I'm not going to get much texture resolution because there's not much here uh, at this size. Okay, for example, if I had a bounding box here encompassing the model, it wouldn't be very high. It would be maybe, what, 300 by you know, 7, 800, something like that. So it's not going to be a very high resolution. So what I need to do is go to external edit projection scale. 300 is chosen. Now if you get toward the upper range here, it's telling you to be careful because it may take a long time to calculate. So just be mindful of that. So we'll leave it at 300% and now edit projection in external editor. So again, the camera is going to basically take a snapshot of all the layers and allow me to paint across different parts of the model.
Okay, so you can see how this works. Okay, so I'll just create a blank layer here. T. Modify this. I'm going to unhide all these. Come back to save again. Okay. So let's go on over to 3D Coat. And you can see what it's doing is it's calculating the projections for every single layer. And of course, since I have you know different UV maps, it's taking a little longer as well. And you can see how that works. So it's a very seamless workflow. It's uh, very straightforward, very easy, and it allows you to utilize each application's strengths in a very fluid manner. Just think of 3D Coat and Photoshop as an extension of one another. So with that, we'll conclude this demonstration of the live linkage between the two applications in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching.